Hey everyone and welcome, it's Chef Jason, your Ace Hardware Grilling Expert. We are here in the Ace Barbecue Pit Studio for tonight's Steak Tips from a Chef. Uh, we are very excited to have you, so thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hey, be sure if you are just signing in, give a shout out to your local Ace Hardware uh, and let us know where your local Ace Hardware is, who is your favorite uh, and where you are watching from. Leave your questions uh, in the chat or give us a shout out in the chat to your local ace. We're going to get started here. Just a couple minutes. We are uh, getting everything fired up and ready to go. Our last little bit of things all set to make sure you are dialed in to become steak rock stars. So like I said, be sure to leave a shout out to your local ace hardware. Let us know which is your favorite ace hardware uh, and we will give them lots of kudos as well. So thanks for hanging out. We're just getting set up and ready to go. So glad to have you here. It's always fun to hang out, right? What is this here? Cool. All right. Give you a little virtual waiting room here of our Ace Barbecue Pit Studio. So very excited. Ooh, Elders Ace Hardware. We got a shout out to Elders in Knoxville. We love the Elders folks and Skeleton Ace Hardware as well. Very, very cool. Like I said, I'm Chef Jason, your Ace Hardware Grilling Expert. We are hanging out here in Denver, Colorado, in the Ace Barbecue Pit Studio. Uh, we've, we're having a blast tonight. We're getting ready to talk all things steak. We've got a lot of cool steak tips for you tonight. Want to make sure we get you set, dialed in, and ready to be absolute rock stars of the grill in the backyard. Because I'll tell you, when people come over to your house, they are judging you on your steak cooking skills. We know that to be true. So tonight, we're going to have a blast. Thank you so much. For hanging out with us. Like I said, if you're new, shout out to your local Ace Hardware. We want to give them lots of love. We've got Los Angeles. We've got Jasper, Georgia. A lot of cool places. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Getting close. We're going to go live right here at 6 p.m. Denver, which is 7 p.m. Central, which is 8 p.m. Eastern or 4 p.m. Pacific. I think I got all the time zones down. I'm like a time zone genius today. So very, very cool. Thank you all for hanging out. We appreciate it. All right, let's do this. We are going to go live and we are going to get started here. So, hey everyone, I'm Chef Jason, your Ace Hardware Grilling Expert. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's Steak Tips from a Chef. Uh, we're very excited to be here on YouTube uh, representing Ace Hardware tonight, talking all things grilling. And I'll tell you, we've got a great agenda tonight. We have got uh, a really cool... Uh, start off, right? We're going to start off and talk all about grills, gear, and gadgets. We're going to talk about how to select a steak because we want you to pick the best steak humanly possible. Talk about seasoning, give you some tips on how to cook those on the Weber grill tonight. Talk a little bit about steak finishing as well. Then after the presentation, so to speak, right? The, the live part of the show, we're going to do a Q&A where you can ask all your questions. I'm telling you what, save your questions to the end and bring it. We want to talk about all things barbecuing and grilling. So ask riveting questions like, hey, what's the best size big green egg for me? Or, hey, which grill do you prefer, chef? Or, wait, pellets, what is my favorite pellet? So we're going to go through a fun little intro, talk all about steaks, and then we're going to open it up and talk all about barbecuing and grilling. And it looks like we've got a shout out to uh, Newberg Ace in uh, Oregon, uh, also moving to Granbury, Texas. I know who that is, Mr. Mark. Uh, sad to see you go, but happy that you get to retire and enjoy. We've got Myrtle Beach in the house. Thank you so much. Myrtle Point, Oregon. Sorry. Uh, Allison says woohoo. And then we've got what? Mount Prospect and Polly's Island, South Carolina. I love it. I love Polly's Island. Uh, I went to school in Charleston, so it's nice to have South Carolina folks on there. All right. So like we said before, we're going to go through a little presentation here. We're going to talk all about uh, steaks. We're going to talk a lot about how to grill them, how to cook them, how to select that best steak for you. And then at the very end, guys, save all of your questions because we're coming back with a live steak Q&A today where we're going to talk about everything, answer all your questions about barbecuing and grilling. I see we've got a couple uh, ribeye questions coming in, so we'll get you all taken care of. So uh, like I said, I'm Chef Jason Morse. We are prepping and getting ready for what is starting tomorrow like the best time of the year to buy a grill. It's Barbecue Fest at your local Ace Hardware. And we are very excited to uh, get you into the grill of your dreams. You can head into your local Ace Hardware. We've got some great deals, some great things going starting tomorrow 
through Sunday, it's Ace Hardware's Barbecue Fest. Tell you what, you want to meet the grill of your dreams? Head into your local Ace Hardware and get some things done and let our helpful folks really work hard to show you the best grill for you. That's right. We're going to fit you to the best grill because you're like a grilling athlete and we want you to have the best tools and the best gear to get everything done. And then, hey, don't forget, it is Mother's Day. So you can also get in there and shop for mom, get mom some cool grills, gear, gadgets, anything she needs to keep that cooking alive uh, and get you all ready to go for an amazing time. Now, one of the first things I think is super important is we got to talk a little bit about grills. We need to talk a little bit about gear. And I'll tell you what, I'm showing off a lot of skills on the Weber grill because when someone says to me, I am looking for that steakhouse quality steak. Hey, I want to make sure I get that hot sear because normally you're looking for a sear that's in that 600 degrees, 650, 700 degree. And that Weber really does a nice job of delivering that. Uh, you can get a great sear on your big green egg as well. Do an amazing job in your Traeger. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about the Weber. And then in the Q&A session, we're going to open it up and get you guys all set. One of the things I like about this Weber too, I've got that sear station. So now I have a 40,000, 39,000 BTU grill, but I can add another 9,000 BTUs with that sear station. And then I'll tell you what, I'm the king of reverse searing. So I really enjoy the reverse sear because now I can uh, start low and slow. I can really build up that internal temperature and then at the very end, absolutely get a perfect sear and a really nice crust. And that comes from some dual zone cooking on the Weber and some dual zone cooking on the big green egg. Uh, and then also on the Traeger, you start off low and slow and finish a little hot and fast. But I like this Weber because that collapsible rack in the back does a great job uh, really getting my steak off that direct heat into the back where I can slowly build that temperature up and then be sure to absolutely crush it at the end and get a good steak. So I, I want a good grill, right? I want a grill that gets hot, that gets a good sear whether that's my Traeger, my Weber, my Big Green Egg. But I will tell you what, if you want to be a successful backyard griller, you are going to need a digital thermometer. Uh, that is going to be your best friend. This is probably my favorite cooking tool because uh, I've got that pinpoint accuracy where I can really get into that steak, into the center, into the side, and track its temperature. And what I like about these digitals is it's a great instant read. I'm going to put that digital probe in there. Boom, I'm going to get that temperature fast. Uh, and get that reading super fast, letting me know where I'm at when it comes to temperature. Uh, if you want to take technology to the next level or stakes to the next level with some technology, the Weber Connect does a great job as well. Uh, and the cool thing is I can use that Weber Connect on gas, pellet, charcoal, really anything I need to uh, to create the most ultimate stake ever. Now, stake selection is super important too because you want to make sure when the time comes – you are getting the best steak possible. So you're going to want to do a couple things, right? You're going to want to talk about grade. What grade uh, are you looking for? Are you looking for prime? Are you looking for choice? Looking for Wagyu beef? Uh, I say there's a grade for every budget. So you're able to pick the best grade that's going to give you the most ultimate beef eating experience, whether that's, like I said, that's choice, prime, or Wagyu. Then develop a relationship. If you have a local butcher, Talk to that local butcher and rely on them to really help you. And they can guide you through the steak selection process. They can get you into the perfect steaks that you need. And they can help you uh, if you're doing low and slow, uh, if you're doing hot and fast, if you're doing some reverse sears. They can do a great job getting you uh, set and ready to go with your steak. So you have that option to talk to that local butcher. Hey, if you know a local rancher that sells meat as well, perfect person to talk to. Or go to your grocery store. Develop a relationship with the butcher behind the counter uh, and talk to them a lot about steaks. Yeah, you can go through the meat case uh, and look at all the all the steaks in the package. Uh, you can pick something out of the package or you can develop that relationship with the butcher where you're able to pick exactly what you want uh, from the meat case. Having them sometimes even cut exactly what you want from thickness, size, uh, and, and grade as well. So definitely uh, talk to your butchers. Develop that relationship and you get to trust them, right? You have a, a two-way conversation and they know what you're looking for can help get you exactly what you want. We've got three different steaks for you here tonight. And you can see by the marbling we have on here, these are all prime grade steaks. These grade very, very high. This marbling is fat, right? Fat adds flavor and fat adds moisture. So it's going to do two things to your steak. It's going to help them be tender, juicy, and delicious. Uh, and it's also going to give them a lot of flavor. That fat is going to act as that moisture that's going to just ensure that steak is tender and eats wonderful. And then that steak is also going to caramelize, that fat's going to caramelize a little bit, giving you a little bit of that Maillard reaction, some of that beautiful crusting, uh, and give you an exceptional amount of flavor. 
Now, there are times where I am a, an absolute New York fan. Uh, it's going to be have a little bit extra chew. It's going to have a little bit more bite to it. I don't want to say it's tough because it's really not tough, but it's a steak that's going to have a little bit more texture, a little more chew. And there's times that I want that. I want a different eating experience in a steak. When you're looking for that soft, wonderful, delicious, I, I would say almost that true grilled steak flavor, you know, that ribeye delivers because You've got that fat that's marbled in there as well, but then you have that kernel or that ribbon of fat in the middle, uh, and that's going to do an exceptional job giving you some flavor. I want to make sure my ribbon or my kernel of fat is not a big, huge eye of fat. Uh, excuse me. A little ribbon is fantastic. A little kernel is great. It's when you get into those big eyes that those steaks tend to curl up a little bit because that fat, once it melts, really leaves that center muscle separated from the other muscle. Uh, and you know, that ribeye cap steak delivers. That is a ton of flavor. The cap is, this is called the spinalis or the ribeye cap right here. This is probably my favorite cut of meat on the animal. It is fantastic. Now, if you want a good solid eating steak, but you want to be a little bit leaner, uh, filet is going to deliver a really good uh, flavor for you as well. And it's going to be leaner. It's going to be a little bit uh, softer in chew, but this is going to give you a great steak experience. Now, I always go with thicker steaks because when it comes to grilling, whether I'm on the Weber, Traeger, Big Green Egg, I want to make sure that I have enough time to do what I want to do with that steak uh, and not have it overcook. Uh, if you're doing minute steaks that are a little bit thinner, well, you know those are going to cook super, super fast where maybe you just want to turn the grill on. It's going to be a hot sear start to finish and you're done. I like these thicker steaks. Uh, these guys are, that's an eight ounce filet and that's a one pound ribeye uh, rib and a one pound New York. Uh, and I went with the bigger ribeye and the bigger New York because, again, I started these guys off low and slow. I wanted that temperature to slowly raise, and then I grilled them off hot and fast at the end. So thicker the steaks, the better. Now, other cool thing about having a thick steak, guess what? Leftovers. Leftovers never hurt anyone. So today's ribeye could be tomorrow's steak tacos or your tomorrow's beef breakfast hash. So got a lot of opportunity to use those guys up as well. Now, you've picked your steak. You've developed that relationship with your butcher. You have met the person who is going to fulfill the needs you have for all things beef. Now, we're talking about seasoning. When I move into seasoning on the steaks, it's really important for me uh, to pick a seasoning that doesn't compete with the steak. I want that steak to be delicious, flavorful. And I eat steak because I like that mineral flavor. I like that iron flavor. And I love the beef experience. So I want a seasoning that uh, I think rounds out that beef flavor, brings some things out of there, and is just a nice even rub. I'm not looking to put a heavy rub on there. I'm not looking to rub, you know, mayonnaise or hot sauce or whatever people are using for binders these days. I like to keep it very simple. And I always say I love to let the beef shine. I want to be able to cut into that steak, eat that, get that umami experience where your eyes roll back in your head and you're like, oh, that was the best bite of steak I've ever had. That is the ultimate goal. That's what's going to happen when you cook steaks uh, for your family and your friends. That's going to keep them coming back, which may or may not be a good thing depending on your steak budget uh, and if you want them to come back or not. So, all right, seasonings. We've got a couple different ones. We've got our coffee rub, which is the Island Boys coffee rub. And then we have that true beef seasoning, what we call rub-a-dub. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion, very, very light but it's going to allow that meat to really shine. So what I'll do first here is let me grab myself a pan real quick. All right. Grab myself a little metal tray here. We're going to go with the ribeye first, right? So I like to take that steak. I like to let it rest for a little bit. I want to get this out of the fridge, out of the package. Give it 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. So it has a chance to rest just a little bit. Uh, I don't let it sit out for a half hour, 45 minutes. I think, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. I'm going to use a little bit of canola olive oil, just a very light canola olive blend oil. I want that to act as my binder just lightly, okay? I don't want to have any flare-ups. I don't want to have any issues on the grill. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all seasoned. And I've got a little hanging piece off here. We're going to trim this, make sure it's steak perfection. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side here. Very, very light. And guess what? I'm going around the edges as well because I want to make sure when we season this steak, we get it all seasoned right. Now, we always say with seasoning, as much or as little as you like. Yes, I know what I like, but I don't think you and I may enjoy the same level of seasoning. So know your audience, know who you're cooking for. 
uh, and season it according to their needs. So I'm just going to do a light little coat here. And then guess what? I'm going to flip this guy up here on this edge, get a little bit. I'm going to turn it and get some on there. All right. And a little bit on this side. And then I'm going to flip it up here and finish it up. So we really want that that edge to edge coverage. We're definitely looking to uh, get this steak covered 100% because uh, at the end of the day, guess what? When it comes time to eat the steak, we're going to cut it. We're going to take a bite of it and we're going to eat everything, right? You're going to eat pretty much all this entire beautiful, juicy, delicious steak. So we want to season it all. Now, we're going to let it sit. I'm going to let that seasoning activate for probably another five to 10 minutes, but that's perfect time to go ahead and preheat your grill. Now, on a gas grill, charcoal grill, uh, and in the Traeger, I'm going to start a little bit lower and a little bit slower on my temperature because I really want to make sure I have a chance to bring that internal temperature up slowly. Traditional sear means this is 600, 700 degrees. We put that steak on there at 50 degrees and we're going from 50 to 130, whatever temperature is done, the entire way over hot heat. So if you've ever been to a steakhouse and they ask you to cut into your steak and check into the very center, because under a normal sear and in a normal steakhouse, it's exposed to such high heat and high temperature. And from the beginning, it goes into protection mode. So the very center is going to be how you like your steak. However, guess what? I want a steak that's medium, literally from the window to the wall. I want that entire steak to be this beautiful medium thing. So I'm going to do the reverse of that. I'm going to put that steak on a low and slow temperature and slowly bring that internal temperature from, you know, let's say 50 to 100. And then I'm going to pull that off, let the steak rest for a little bit and sear it hot and fast at the end, because that's when I'm going to get that crust and get everything I want. Now, when I'm doing it on the Weber, I'm going to turn this grill on and I'll probably just turn these burners on on this side. And I'm going to get that grill up into that 250, 300 degree range. And I'll go ahead and put my steaks up here so that now they're indirect cooking method. I'm not over the flames. I'm not over the heat. I'm kind of indirect. I'm going to plug in something, right? I may plug in my Weber Connect if I want to track this temperature on my phone, or I'm going to stay close and handy and ready with my thermometer, but I'm going to slowly, slowly bring that internal temperature up into that, you know, kind of that 103, 105 degrees, just, just a tick away from really where I want it. And then we're going to pull it out and let it rest, right? So we'll start off, let's say, with that steak and we'll put it up there and we'll do its thing. Now, that reverse searing, that first initial part is probably going to take you 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how big your steak is. But that's all right. Keep an eye on it. Don't go anywhere. Just take your time. Let that steak do its thing. We're not rushing it here. We're trying to create a steak masterpiece. So leave it on there. Let it go low and slow. Let it do its thing. Then when it comes time, right? Let's say now all of a sudden through the magic of TV, this steak was on here. We're going to pull that steak off. It's already at 103 degrees. We're going to let it rest. But we're going to turn everything on high. So I'm going to turn the three main burners on high. I'm going to turn the sear station on high, now creating this 650, 700 degree, uh, beautiful little sear station right over here. All right. Now, once the grill heats up, and let's say you're doing this on your Traeger or your big green egg. On the big green egg, guess what? You're going to put your fire on the right side and you're going to put your steak on the left. Whether you have a large and extra large, you can easily uh, do a dual zone where you light the fire and light the charcoal on one side, put your steak on the other side. That way that heat's coming in directly and, and cooking that steak. Same with the Weber kettle. Same if you're doing it on the Weber kettle. Uh, and then if you're doing it on the Traeger, obviously you're going you're gonna to be indirect no matter what, but turn your temperature down low and slow and let that slowly build up that heat. All right. Now, when it comes time to sear, everybody's going to high temperature. So if you're on the big green egg, you're up in that 650, 700 degree Weber kettle, same temperature, Traeger, 500 degrees, get that nice and hot, get that everything ready. Same with the Weber, you are going nice and hot. Then guess what? I'm going right back here. I'm just using this to, to transport the steak, but we're going to cook it right on the grill grates. We're going to put that steak right hot and fast on that grill grate. And then look, it ain't cooking, right? So we shut it. We close the lid and we get it all cooking. We're just using that uh, uh, metal pan as a kind of an example. We're not going to cook on the metal pan. So now all of a sudden I plug my Weber connect in. I can check it with my temperature gauge, my thermometer. I'm going to start watching that steak. When you get to the reverse sear part at the very end, you're maybe talking two to three minutes per side. All I'm trying to do is build up that last little bit of crust, get a little bit of those beautiful diamond marks that we love so much. Uh, 
and I'm going to get that steak set. Now, I'm going to go two to three minutes maybe, and then I'm going to check it. And when it comes to uh, preparing your steak, here is my, I need those tongs if you would please. Let me show you how to handle the steak because that's super, super important. One of the things you want to be aware of. A couple different ways you, we've got this, uh, uh, ways you can handle it, right? Thank you. You've got a spatula, a burger spat. You can easily uh, use that to flip your steaks carefully. We want to make sure you're not flipping them in the air and slamming them down. We don't want to break that steak apart or lose any of that moisture. Definitely be careful if you're using a fork. We have a tendency when we flip steaks to jam them in there, flip it, uh, give it a little bit of toss. Again, trying our hardest not to break that steak up, right? Tongs, absolutely going to be your best friend. Give them a couple clicks, make sure they work. You're going to go with that steak from the side and squeeze that steak and flip it over that way. Because what we're doing is we're protecting it. We're not going at the steak with tongs and pulling it and flipping it because every time we break that crust apart, we use a little bit, lose a little bit of moisture in there. Our goal is to retain as much moisture as we want. So let's say we got that steak three minutes, we flipped it, we're gonna let it go another three minutes, and all of a sudden, that steak's getting up to that temperature, right? It's getting up to that 110, 115, 120 degrees, and you're thinking, when is it done, when is it done, when do I pull the steak off? I'll tell you, when you take the steak off the grill, it doesn't magically stop cooking. I always tell people, if I want a medium steak, I like to pull it out about medium rare, let that steak carry over and finish perfectly right at that medium. It's like running a marathon. If I'm running a marathon, which I wouldn't, but if I was, if I was running a marathon, I'm not the guy that's going to run super hardcore through the finish line and do more than I have to. I'm the guy that's going to probably crawl the last few feet and just barely finish. That's what we want that steak to do. We really want that steak to crawl to the finish and get to that perfect doneness so that when we eat it, it is right at medium. Uh, if you pull it at medium and let it rest, chances are it's going to be in that medium well range. So, all right, through the power of TV, ready? Here we go. Da, da, da. We open it up, and here is our steak that we took off the grill, and we cooked a little filet for you today because uh, we can show you a really good uh, cross-section cut of that filet. Now, I have it on a roasting rack. So when I'm done, shut your grill off, let it go. Your steak is set and ready to go. It's resting now. It is time for you to get all your sides, your accoutrement, get everything gathered so that you have everything you need to make uh, your meal work. Now, look at this. We talk a little bit about finishing. If you're going to use a finishing butter, which is absolutely amazing. A little lemon garlic butter, even a little bit of truffle butter. Uh, this is a little truffle lemon butter that we have. Just a small little slice of butter on top of your steak while it rests is perfect because that butter has a chance to melt out and really be soft and easy and help finish that steak. And I'll tell you, there's something really nice about a nice little crust on your steak plus a beautiful little soft finish of butter. All right. So, the steak has rested. I usually say if it's a small filet like this, eight ounce filet, I'm going to give it maybe three minutes to rest. What I'm trying to do is as it cooks, it's going to continue to build, build, build temperature. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, I don't have any more heat that's causing me to build temperature. Okay. Now I'm going to soften and slowly relax. And as it relaxes and softens, all the juices tend to uh, redistribute making that a wonderful, flavorful steak. Now, if you can see this here, look at look at the juices on the pan. We really don't have a lot. We did a successful job resting, uh, allowing those juices to redistribute. If you were to cut into the steak fresh off the grill, this entire pan would be full of juices because all of the juice in the steak has now kind of escaped and is sitting on your pan. So the benefits of resting is really from a a uh, moist standpoint, you're going to be right where you want to be. Uh, it's going to be juicy, flavorful, and absolutely delicious. Hey, don't forget too, like I said in the beginning, Barbecue Fest is starting tomorrow at your local Ace Hardware. And it couldn't come really at a better time because it's Mother's Day weekend as well. So you can head into your local Ace, get some fantastic deals on grills. But then, hey, mom, the griller mom in your life, you can help mom get a new grill we will assemble it and deliver it. We've got a lot of cool things from gear to gadgets and more. So head into your local ACE, enjoy barbecue fest at your local ACE, and then let our helpful folks introduce mom to the grill of her dreams. And we'll get her covered. We'll get her taken care of, whether it's a Traeger, Weber, Big Green Egg. I'm confident we have them all. All right. So that filet is rested. It's the moment of truth. I'm going to cut into that. And like we said, look at that right there. See that doneness? 
Oh, that's kind of beautiful right there. I mean, if I had to say myself, but that is what we're talking about. When you look at this steak, we now have a steak that the entire steak is literally the doneness that we want. To me, that is a huge benefit of that reverse sear. And if you look on the board, we don't have a lot of juices on the board because we properly rested that steak and made sure that everything stayed beautiful and juicy right in the steak. So I'll tell you, we've got a lot of cool recipes for you. you can head to, you're here actually, you don't have to head to. You are here on the YouTube, Ace Hardware YouTube channel. So you can dive into our Ace channel. Uh, we've got a lot of cool reverse sear videos. We just did a Wagyu filet on the big green egg and that was actually a really fun day here in the studio for us to uh, cook Wagyu filets. We had a mistake, so we had to cook them twice and eat more steak, but it is what it is. So, all right. Well, that's it. That's kind of my tips for you, right? It really starts with making sure you have the right gear, making sure you have a great thermometer, and then working a relationship with who you buy your meat from to make sure you get the best meat possible. Then seasoning, keeping it light, easy, really letting that steak shine and do its thing, and then cooking. Whether you're doing a hot and fast, because our big green egg Wagyu filet was actually a hot and fast cook, because there's times you want to cook hot and fast or reverse sear. So determining really the best way for you to cook your steak, and then how are you going to finish it? What's the best butter? What are the side dishes you want to go with that? Uh, and really, what is going to work out best to give you the ultimate eating experience? All right, you guys, it is time for the live q and I've got Monique over here. She's going to be asking questions. I'm going to be answering questions. If we don't know, we're just going to make something up. So uh, bring all your questions. Eric says uh, the big green egg is a beast. Yes, the big green egg is absolutely a beast. I'm um, looking at the TV. Fred says he prefers ribeyes in Raleigh, North Carolina. I like it. Monique, what else do we got there? We've got hello from Indiana. Good to see you. Wilson says Traeger grills are the best. I love it. Uh, Shonda says she got an awesome can smoker from Ace last season. Perfect. I love it. Uh, Lauren posted a picture of a cow. Thank you. We appreciate that. All right. Question. What do you got? Right, I have a first question. Is it better to cook the steak at room temperature or straight out of the fridge? Ah, good question. So Karen said, is it better to cook the steak at room temp or straight out of the fridge? You definitely want to cook it straight. Uh, I'm sorry, at room temperature. When you cook it straight out of the fridge, that muscle is really, really cold. And when you go straight from the fridge to the grill, that muscle is really firm and really tense. And it cooks from uh, what we call a bound state. So it's kind of bound up. That muscle is kind of flexing a little bit. It's firm. It's going to cook from that. Pull it out. Give it a chance to soften. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. Let it soften and relax just a little bit. That relaxed muscle or that steak from our relaxed state is really going to produce a much softer, easier, better eating experience for you. So uh, I don't, I don't do the half hour, 45 minutes. I do the, you know, five to 15 minutes, whatever I feel right. And then again, after you season it, let it go as well. Uh, Raymond says ribeyes on charcoal. Yeah. I will tell you when it comes to picking charcoal, gas, or pellet, uh, one of the cool things is I always look at it from a flavor standpoint, right? Let's say I had a Weber, Traeger, Big Green Egg, Blackstone Griddle. I'm going to have four different steak flavor profiles based on those four grills. Charcoal, big, bold, beautiful, robust flavor, allowing me to finish it with some chips, allowing me to put some uh, chunks in there, maybe if I want longer smoke. Traeger, that smooth, even wonderful wood-fired fun. Weber, hot, fast, going to give me a juicy, beautiful sear. And then Blackstone Griddle, going to give me a nice crust, so I'm going to be able to sear it, uh, maybe do a nice crust on the outside, baste it with butter. Really four different cooking experiences. So when someone asks me, what's my favorite grill? It's more of a pro, uh, flavor profile that I'm looking for. All right, question. All right, Allison asks, does, it, does putting a rub on a steak give you char? All right, question was, does putting rub on a steak give you char? It's going to give you some char, right? If you have a lot of sugar in that rub, and be careful with rubs that have a lot of sugar, that sugar is going to burn and definitely give you a lot more char. Uh, and that's how you get that. The Maillard reaction is going to be from the myoglobin, from the protein in the meat, and a little bit of that fat that's going to create most of that bronzing that you see in a steak. But a rub will definitely give you some char, especially if it's got blackening things in there like uh, a Cajun seasoning. Next question. Nikki asks, do you always put the steak on the grill right directly, or would you put the steak on the grill pan on the grill? Uh, Nikki, great question. Uh, it really depends. If you're going to get a crust on there, right? and you wanna put it in cast iron, fantastic cooking method. 
little bit of bacon fat, a little bit of butter, put that steak in there and start to build up an extreme amount of heat. I always load my cast iron on the grill when the grill is heating up so I get a nice, hot, beautiful sear. And then you have the opportunity when you're in a pan, add a little bit of butter, some rosemary, some chopped garlic, and use that to baste your steak. When you're on the grill grate itself, you're going to get much uh, more direct heat, uh, giving you more, uh, I think, more uh, grill marks, a little bit more crust, maybe with a little bit more bite. Uh, a sear from the pan is going to give you a thicker, thicker crust, but I feel like dry uh, sear on the grill grate is going to give you a, a different eating crust with those beautiful uh, crisp grill marks, a little bit softer exterior. Um, yeah, we had another question. What did Hugger ask up there? Uh, Start. I have started to sear in CI skillet or on griddle, so I get solid sear instead of the diagonal grill marks. Also in skillet, you can base it with butter and rosemary or thyme. What is your favorite? Yeah, Hugger, Hugger said the same thing. When you do it in the cast iron, it gives you that opportunity to baste it with rosemary and butter and those types of things. And I'll tell you, it's interesting for me because I really go back and forth. I mean, for me, it's more of a, what flavor am I in the mood for? Uh, if I want that, that, that Traeger flavor, boom, we know we can do a reverse here on the Traeger. Big green egg, I know I can get that charcoal in there. And uh, cast iron, I can do it that way. And on the Weber, I get a different experience as well. Uh, so the basting in a cast iron pan works fantastic. I know a lot of people are doing that. Uh, and my favorite, I don't know um, if I can pick my favorite cooking method because honestly, and I'm not being evasive, honestly, for me, it's 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 my favorite. What is my favorite flavor that I like in my steaks? And it just depends. Recently, uh, it's been all about the big green egg because my family has been saying we love charcoal. All right, what's Carl got for us? So we just did that. Caveman style is where you literally get your steaks right down on top of the coals. Now, I will tell you, the first one we did, we did not have success with because it was like barbecue. Uh, we absolutely like crucified that poor thing. I will tell you what, what I'm learning on the big green egg or what we're, I'm learning to do better on the big green egg, we will actually turn the expander, the very top of the expander with the sliding rack, we will turn that upside down put the grill grate down on there and it keeps it just far enough away from the charcoal that I still get the blistering heat, but I don't have charcoal stuck to it. So caveman is nice. I like that. Uh, you just have to be careful because man, I'll tell you that big green egg is hot. And when you get that steak, it's got a little bit of fat. If you're doing a Wagyu and that fat gets away from you, that steak is toast in no time. All right, Lauren. All right, Lauren asks, what is your favorite side dish for steak? What's your favorite side dish, Monique, for steaks? Maybe some mashed potatoes and some greens. All right. Monique like, likes mashed potatoes and greens. <clears throat> I like baked potatoes. Love baked potatoes. And street corn is fantastic with a steak. I absolutely love some elotes, Mexican street corn on the cob, where it just like covers your beard and you are in a good place. But potatoes are definitely something uh, we always love to have, whether it's a baked potato or mashed potatoes. Now I'm totally craving mashed potatoes. Next question. Nikki is wondering, does the cut of the steak matter to you to choose the method of cooking the steak or just the flavor you're cooking? So the question was, does the cut of steak matter to me uh, when I choose how I'm going to cook it or just the flavor? Yeah, it totally, it, it definitely is, is a, um, yeah, hold on a second. The cut of the steak definitely matters to me, right? I want to find if I'm going to cast iron cook something or I'm going to cook it very, very hot and fast. Uh, I want it to have a little bit more fat. So I want a ribeye or a prime New York or even a Wagyu filet. Um, filets like to be started off a little bit softer, a little bit lighter in temperature, and then finished kind of hot at the end. Uh, when I want that beautiful, beautiful crust, that beautiful char, uh, I'm going to do a high fat prime or Wagyu uh, ribeye or New York. Uh, definitely that cut is going to give me it's it's going to give me the cooking method I want, right? But it's also going to give me the best flavor that I want to have as well. Because, uh, you know, if I want just a soft, easy steak, that filet is going to deliver that for me. And I know that. But if I want big, beefy, beefy, beefy experience, that tells me if I want that big beef experience, it tells me I probably want to do a reverse sear where it's hot and fast at the end. And I know the two steaks to do that are going to be the New York and the ribeye prime or a little bit higher grade and then obviously a little bit softer on that filet. So yeah, kind of both, right? I kind of I kind of feel like, what do I want to eat? 
And then the flavor I want kind of dictates the steak and the cooking method there. That's the answer I was trying to get 47 minutes later. So thank you. Next question. Well, Shauna agrees with us. Baked potato hands down is your favorite side dish. All right, Shonda. Shonda said baked potato hands down. Now, here's my question for all of you watching, all of you. On your baked potatoes, are you just doing butter and sour cream or do you like them loaded? That is definitely uh, something I love to ask and I'd love to hear what you like. Me, I like mine loaded. Butter, sour cream, bacon, a little bit of cheese, some chives. What do you like? I like it all. You like it all? She likes it loaded. All right, Nancy, what's higher than prime? Nancy wanted to know. Uh, Wagyu. Wagyu beef is going to be higher grade than prime and then you're going to get into the Kobe beef. Uh, Wagyu is definitely a price point thing, right? They, they're expensive steaks. Uh, but uh, well, the, the Wagyu we had here was pretty solid, right? All right. Next question. Scott asked, do you recommend using grill grids on your grills? Do you really get a better sear? <clears throat> the question was, do I like using grill grates on my grill? Yeah, you can get a good sear out of your grill grates. I'll tell you what. You can see I don't have them on the Weber, and it's not because I don't like them. Uh, I've got cast iron here on the Weber, and I'm really a huge fan of that cast iron. Uh, you're going to get more precision, I think, sear and, and diamonds on your steaks when you use grill grates. Cast iron and grill grates do something very similar. They act like a heat sink. They absorb a lot of energy and a lot of heat out of the grill, giving you a hotter, hotter feel and a hotter sear. So, all right. Shonda is wondering, how do you feel about Chuck Eye? Oh, I love Chuck. I absolutely think Chuck Chuck and Chuck eyes are some of my favorite cuts. I love everything about the Chuck uh, Chuck muscle. Uh, if you, uh, uh, we have taken Chuck roasts and done a reverse sear on Chuck roast and been able to slice them and eat them in tacos because they were so soft. So when you think of Chuck normally as pot roast kind of deal, do it low and slow. Chuck is such a beautiful cut and delivers fantastic. Go. Next question, what's a good marinade to make the steak tender? Uh, I wouldn't say a marinade to make the steak tender. You want to do what we call jacquard. So jacquard is basically, um, uh, uh, it's a plastic machine that's got some fingers on it. And it's more of a blade tenderizer than it is a meat tenderizer. Uh, there's such a fine line between the amount of acid you use in, in a tenderizing method to get steaks a little bit easier to eat. For me, it's so much easier just to have them jacquarded. You can even ask your butcher to jacquard them for you. Uh, then read the packages too. Very, very important to read your package because um, they will say mechanically blade tenderized if you've already had them. So that's uh, something to be aware of too. Hugger is wondering what thickness do you prefer? Oh yeah, Hugger said, what's my steak thickness? I will tell you, I'm inch, inch and a half on steaks. So I'm into that one pound, a pound and a half on steaks. Like I said earlier, the best part of that whole thickness of steaks is really being able to uh, do more with that steak. I can do more reverse sear. Uh, I can really have a lot more fun with that steak uh, and get it where I need it. And it's a little bit more forgiving. Uh, it is so much nicer uh, with that thicker steak to be a little bit undercooked, which I feel like that may happen more than overcooked with a thinner, thinner steak. So what do we got? Shonda said, I'm a minimalist, minim, minimalist when it comes to my baked potato. So I think minimum would be like butter and sour cream. I don't know, maybe. All right, what else you got? Gintus, what does Gintus say? Reverse seared some ribeyes tonight on my Weber gas grill. What's the ideal temp during your baking time before I sear? So as you're reverse searing on your Weber grill, uh, I would say ideal temp on the grill itself would probably be in that 300 degree range. Remember, I'm going to turn these two main burners on over here, keep it about 300, leave this burner off and put my steak in the back. So keeping that grill about 300, plugging in something like the Weber Connect, where I'm able to slowly, slowly, slowly just watch that temperature rise and then pull it, rest it for just a minute while the grill heats up and finishes off. And then we are good to go from there. Uh, Yeah, that's interesting. I know a lot of people talk about seasoning the steak the night before. And Hugger said, what are my thoughts on it? Well, I always feel that they call it dry brining. There's no need to really dry brine a steak like this. I love to give it just 10 or 15 minutes with that rub to do its thing. Uh, and then I can always add just a little bit more. You know, if I wanted to, I could sprinkle a little bit more on top of this and have that be done. Uh, 
I have found, me personally, when I season the night before, it almost dries my steak out. Uh, and the outer surface of that steak uh, just gets to be a little bit too, uh, almost tough maybe, or a little bit dry. So I like to do it right before the moment. I let that fat and that rub, that fat heats up when you start to grill it off and that rub works together. And they usually come out in a perfect, perfect union. Shonda said, forget the butter, forget the sour cream. Most times just a little bit of pepper. Shonda said pepper only. All right. I, I can be down with a little bit of pepper. I, uh, I'm not a huge pepper fan normally, but I have been enjoying a lot of fresh cracked pepper lately on things, whether it's broccoli or peas. I love peas. Peas with a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper are absolutely amazing as well. So, hey, now listen, I know we didn't get to all of your questions and I apologize, but I'll tell you what, got a couple cool things for you. So tonight after our live event, be sure to come back if you have more questions uh, and come into this video. Be sure to type everything in the comment section because I'm going to be coming back all week long, uh, making sure we get everything dialed in and get you all set and ready to go. So if you happen to watch this after the live event is over, jump in, ask your questions, leave them in the comments. We will get you set. Hey, Steve, Steve Guzman says hello. Uh, Steve watches a lot of our YouTube videos because I see his comments on quite a bit. So thank you so much. But like I said, leave your questions and comments below, you guys. And uh, if you're watching this after we've gone live, don't sweat it. I'm coming back to hang out. Make sure we get you all taken care of to be steak geniuses. And then don't forget, as always, it is Barbecue Fest, May 5th, starting tomorrow at your local Ace Hardware. It is the best time of the year to buy a steak. It is absolutely fantastic. So buy a steak. Oh my gosh, it's steak night. All I can talk about is steak. It is the best time of the year to buy a grill. So head into your local Ace Hardware. Let our team of helpful folks and our barbecue experts take care of you and get you that grill of your dream. And then it's Mother's Day coming up. So make sure you treat mom to something fantastic and get her an absolutely great grill gift, gear, gadget, heck, even a new grill, uh, all of that good stuff. So Gintis, we're coming back to LaGrange Park. I'll be there in June, 25th and 26th, I think. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And don't forget if there's anything we can do to be helpful, leave your questions and comments below. We will get you all taken care of. But I'm Chef Jason, your Ace Harbor Grilling Expert. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.